Good afternoon. I will call this uh, conference committee of the House Transportation House File 4 to order. The intent of today's meeting is to walk through some of the work that the uh, House Committee and the Senate Committee have been doing for what I would say approximately two years. And uh, we have some thoughts and, and have put together things in a format that we would like to uh, lay out these, these options. Uh, this is not a uh, formal offer or a formal House position, but I think it's, it's um, time to make sure that we're talking about all the things that we said we would talk about from the start. Uh, if I can say that um, a couple of years ago, I did ask for time. And uh, it seems as though we're running out of it lately, so here we are today. And, but some of the things that we've, we've talked about and been consistent about from, uh, from day one is that we need a long-term comprehensive transportation plan. And uh, we've talked about ways to fund it, and we've talked about what needs to be in it. We need, uh, we've talked about the need to address transit situations. We need to address the roads and bridges in our state. But it truly needs to be a Minnesota plan. So with that intent, uh, I'm going to walk through some of the um, thoughts that we have put together on the House side. I will, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Chair, I didn't pass those to your side. Just a quick review, the, the House position would be that we would put $300 million in general funds, uh, general fund, bless you, general fund revenue into, um, into roads and bridges. And that would come from uh, sales, part, sales tax on auto parts, on motor vehicle lease tax, and on rental tax. The uh, additional dollars that we have, that we have uh, talked about from a road and bridge side is the additional uh, the slowing down of the depreciation special, special uh, or the schedule of the uh, registration fees, which would have uh, uh, raised approximately $100 million on average. And then we also talked about our, our trunk highway funding at, at approximately $200 million. So on the roads and bridge side, we feel that that was a very significant move. We feel that uh, $600 million per year would generate uh, the dollars to complete that $6 billion 10-year plan. So then the, the point where we needed to get to and we needed to talk about today is the transit piece. And what we've, we've talked about is, is how, to we, how do we do a number of things there. We've struggled with uh, part of how the, the dollars are collected, where they go to, some of the representation uh, of that, the governance of that. So we, we really talked about some reform on the, on the Met Council side that, um, I, or I guess the process side, not necessarily the Met Council, but, but how, do, how do we make sure that uh, if we are looking at anything in fees that, that it's done appropriately and, and responsibly. And uh, secondly, what we would like to do is we would like to get the state of Minnesota out of the business of building and operating tr uh, rail. That would be the intent. So, so with that, what we are proposing or what we've talked about, I guess, is a, is a quarter cent uh, local option sales tax for the five county area that does not have that currently. There are 87 counties in this state. 82 of them have the ability to raise a local option sales tax. The five counties that are in the um, County Transit Improvement Board, the CTIB area, do not. So we would uh, look at the availability of them to raise uh, that quarter cent option. Uh, in addition, we would uh, also look at the, the possibility of the Met Council being able to, to do the same. And with that would come the ability for that uh, revenue generation to take over the current operating costs of rail, which is approximately $32 million right now. So the, the state's obligation right now is $32 million a year, along with the 10% uh, capital infusion that we are uh, responsible for as well, which uh, over a time period, if we are able to remove the state from that equation, we would be saving approximately $750 million over a 10-year plan. So 
we feel that that trade-off of allowing the, the local counties to decide whether or not uh, that they would like that option, uh, what that would allow them to do is if they wanted to continue on their same path, they certainly could. If they wanted to um, now have the option to, um, uh, for example, get out of the, the CTIB uh, group and uh, go on their own, then they would, they would reduce themselves by a, a quarter by getting out of the CTIB. They could, if they turned around and and uh, increase the sales tax by a quarter, that would be a net zero result, and they would have control over their budget. They would have control to, to use those taxes for roads, bridges, transit, whatever they decide. So we are really pushing the idea of a, of a local, um, local control and, and local option uh, to do so. Um, a couple of things that, that go along with that. Um, this, would, um, this would also uh, prohibit the use of the new sales tax dollars to anything but buses for bus transit, uh, rapid bus transit, uh, bus travel. So uh, again, just trying to reiterate that we believe that if uh, transit areas themselves would like to focus on, uh, on um, tr uh, light rail or, or other modes of transportation that they would control their own dollars to do so. Um, some of the, the reform that we are looking for uh, from the Met Council side would be uh, the adding of a staggered terms for representatives on the Met Council. We would also be asking for uh, a new nominating committee that uh, elected officials would, would be a part of. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I guess at, at this point in time, uh, Mr. Chair, I would, I would uh, open it up for maybe some clarifying questions or uh, comments by yourself. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I appreciate uh, um, uh, the, the package of ideas. Um, uh, certainly, um, uh, certainly represents us significant movement on your part and, and on the part of your, your committee. Appreciate the, the recognition of uh, the vitality uh, of, of transit uh, and, the, and the need to do a, to do a statewide uh, bill um, that uh, also includes uh, a, a measure of sustainability and, and multimodalism and um, recognizes that Minnesotans in all walks of life need access to mobility and what mobility provides in their lives. And, and um, uh, I, I appreciate the, the creativity uh, around the, the political issues um, that, that there are, the sensitivities there are, are uh, along certain modes, so it's creative. And, and, uh, and, uh, and that I appreciate uh, very, very much. And so um, it's definitely a, a, a proposal that's uh, worth looking over and, and worth considering. Um, you and I have had, of course, uh, a number of conversations in the last few weeks, and so um, if, if you don't mind, we'd like to um, present some, some of our ideas, which are, would be similar to what you've just presented, some of which are the synthesis of conversations with, with yourself and other folks and, and, and our leadership as well, um, but we should probably see if um, any, anyone else has questions or comments at this point. On your proposal, I should add one one of the items that that are in we mm. we did put this in bill format as well, but uh, just just kind of getting this together. Uh, one of the items that we we do have some limitations on are specifically the south southwest uh, light rail project that would have to meet very specific criteria for for that to receive any additional state funding. So we can we can walk through that as well. Right. Very good. Um, so I don't have any, any specific questions or, or uh, need any clarification at this point myself. I'm wondering if any of my conferees do. Okay, what's your pleasure? Do you want to do a more specific walk through the bill or um, would you like us to? 
present our ideas and concepts. I think you should go ahead with the, the conceptual things and, and then uh, yeah. from a process standpoint, what I would suggest is that uh, we give you the opportunity to take the bill and bill format uh, back with you uh, as, a, as a conference uh, committee All right. to walk through so then we could get detailed questions and, and make it more productive as opposed to just trying to, to walk through it all at once. All right. Very good. Oh. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I've read this quickly through and I think that we should pass this today and get it on the governor's desk tomorrow if we can. I mean, I think we should whiz bang it through and, uh, and see what happens. Thank you, Representative Earhart. All right. Chair Dibble. The whiz bang, the whiz bang approach. All right. <laughs> um, I don't completely disagree, although we have some ideas too that we'd like to put out on the table. So maybe we can synthesize and then whiz bang. Um, so, so <laughs> um, I don't know if there's an expression for that. Um, so I'm, I'm just gonna uh, go through, I have some, I have some notes. Um, and I just realized there's a, they're not com complete and, and there's some typos, but uh, um, I'll use them as a, as a rough reference. I'll describe um, our proposal and um, and then we also have it written in bill form and I'll also extemporate a little bit because uh, there's a couple of ideas that, that we could insert that, I didn't that we didn't necessarily pick up um, in this particular draft. Um, but very, very uh, quickly, um, uh, uh, what, the, what the Senate would propose at this point would be to um, uh, dedicate um, the sales tax uh, on auto parts, um, as you, you have proposed, um, that would eventually, over a course of a few years, get up to about $300 million per year. That would be constitutionally dedicated. Um, we would propose to, to phase that in over, over five years' time. Um, we'd put that on that, that uh, constitutional question on the ballot um, this November. Um, kind of adding to that idea, um, would be to uh, constitutionally dedicate um, that little sliver of the gas tax that's presently devoted statutorily is kind of kind of scooped out off the top of, of the sales tax gas tax collections um, that uh, that are paid by motorboat users, snowmobiles, mm -hmm. ATVs, off highway motorcycles, and off road vehicles. Um, so that would just be kind of locked down in the constitution. Um, we would also then uh, do a license tab fee uh, increase, um, similar to the proposal that we've made in the past, which is the, uh, which has the, uh, the moving from 1.25 to 1.5% on the value of the vehicle, leaving the, the um, depreciation schedule pretty much the same, but also raising the um, base tax as well as the, um, the minimum tax. Um, that raises about $180 million a year. We have the, the late fees um, proposal. Um, if you pay your tabs late, um, you'd have to pay a little bit of a penalty. Um, uh, we'd have collectors, those with collectors uh, plates, rather than paying a one-time $25 fee, they would pay the, the minimum tax annually. Um, and then uh, for the, the metropolitan area, that, and that goes into the highway user fund, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then in the metropolitan area, um, we picked up a concept that is similar to what you just described, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, we would uh, allow for a, a quarter cent uh, to be imposed um, by the Met Council or to the Met Council, and that would pay only for uh, buses, uh, and that would be within, only within the transit taxing district. Um, buses would include, of course, bus rapid transit. Um, then we would allow counties uh, to impose a quarter cent sales tax. Um, the, the kind of the innovation here is, and this would be for whatever they would, any transportation they would deem uh, is, is appropriate for that purpose. Roads, buses, rail, bus rapid transit, bike ped, um, et cetera. Um, they could bring those dollars to, to CTIB if, if they so chose. Um, they, the, the other innovation there is that they would um, need to seek the, the ratification of the majority of the cities uh, as represented by the population, 50% plus one of the population within that county 
um, uh, before that tax would be imposed in that county. Um, uh, in Hennepin County, they would they would ha have to be sure that that Minneapolis um, also uh, ratifies taking that action. And then we also have the similar metro governance reforms that you just described, which are um, mostly the product of the Citizens League recommendations. Um, rural transit, um, we would assume that uh, the $32 million that presently gets taken from the motor vehicle lease tax and goes into the general fund that would come in uh, to, uh, would not go to the transportation, or to the general fund, but would come in for, for transportation purposes, and then we would split those dollars 50% for rural transit, 50% for uh, metropolitan area county roads, the five collar counties, not including Hennepin and Ramsey, proportionally split according to rep, uh, population as it is now. Uh, we would also give rural transit um, a little bit more general fund, about $15 million per year. Um, we would um, uh, also retain um, the local road proposal that we had presented, um, which was the $10 sur surcharge on tabs as well as on, on title transfers, um, which raises approximately $57 million per year for cities below 5,000 and 57 million for cities uh, above 5,000. Um, we would uh, get some general fund dollars, about $10 million to what we're calling safe routes. Like that seems to be a dirty word, so we're trying to call it something that's a little more palatable under which safe routes to school would be a uh, um, a kind of a subset and an eligible use of those dollars and making sure that we also dedicate the federal dollars that flow in um, to, to, the, to the state for those purposes are, are permanently devoted for that purpose. On freight rail, um, we would just retain the, uh, the proposal to increase from 1 million to 2.5 million, um, the hold back from the trunk highway fund from the, the traffic penalties uh, to improve grade crossings on an, that would be an annual um, we take in some of the freight safety language. Um, I know that there's a, a compromise proposal that, that Senator Jensen has worked out uh, with the railroads, so, so we would take that language. Um, and I think part of that is an agreement for two additional uh, rail inspectors. Um, the public-private partnership proposal, there's some other small notes here. We'd allow for some eligible uses of the Metro sales tax to support transit management organizations, some dollars for centers for transportation studies uh, research. We'd make sure that the opt-outs got some of those dollars um, that go to the to Met Council uh, from, the, from the additional Metro sales tax. We develop a, a bonding proposal within the Trunk Highway Fund for quarters of commerce, trans, uh, uh, transportation economic development, the straight road construction. We'd make sure that we also have increased appropriations as appropriate for the state road construction program, operations and maintenance planning and development, some other miscellaneous things that we need to appropriate uh, out of the Trunk Highway Fund for those purposes, including county turnbacks. And then a, then a list of some, uh, um, some of the uh, policy provisions that are kind of floating around um, that either uh, died on the vine last year or in, in House File 4 or were in the supplemental budget from this year that is now without a home. Um, uh, Ms. Berzowski, any any major omissions or errors? You mean there could be more? <laughs> yeah. We do. Uh, we do have uh, placed some conditions uh, as well on on Southwest Light Rail. The, as you know, the federal, or sorry, the final environmental impact statement was just released. Um, and we would ask the Environmental Quality Board to take a look at that and make a determination of adequacy on that FEIS. Okay. Uh, just a couple of notes. I'm glad you mentioned a, a couple of things uh, that I uh, failed to, to mention. Uh, we, too, have the, the rail safety language and the uh, commitment by the railroads on, on some of our projects for rail grade crossing. Uh, we're also there. And then additional funding to um, safe routes to school as well um, through uh, some of the dollars that are being taken from the, the Trunk Highway Fund right now. Uh, then also, we uh, consistent with our other plan, we do still fund our small cities plan that we, that we initiated last year, uh, but we are back up to the $25 million that we uh, allotted for last year. And not only that, uh, we created the same type of fund for townships uh, because that's where we feel that uh, they have really been uh, struggling as of late. So those are two of the things I think I, I've failed to mention there. 
but uh, I certainly appreciate the, the opportunity to, to get together and to, to at least walk through and, and to give the public an opportunity to see that uh, there has been a lot of work done over the last couple of years. Uh, we feel that uh, we have made significant progress and, and we're hoping that this conversation will uh, end up in a uh, long-term plan that, that we can all accept. Uh, for now, what we will do is, is uh, uh, we do have, uh, Rashawn, do you have copies of that? Bill will we'll make sure that you get those in your, and your conferees get those, and, and uh, I will uh, adjourn this meeting and hand the gavel over to you. Yeah. And All first, right. if you have any uh, questions right now or any um, comments. No, um, I, I appreciate that. Uh, I, I, I'm actually available to respond to any questions that any your members might have. Uh, Mr. Sp Mr. Chair, uh, just a quick question. Um, I, I'm trying to remember, what did you have in for quarters of commerce uh, in the dollar amounts? Do you have that uh, briefly available? Uh, we, 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 uh, um, so uh, we have blanks right now. So, okay. so we're look, looking for your advice, uh, Representative Petersburg. You tell lots. us. All right, lots. All right, gotcha. <laughs> Whatever it takes to get your vote, you tell us. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Oh, it's fine. Which one is this? Well, our intention is to pass out our bills. What is Yeah, I think we just did. Oh, but we'll have copies of ours for you. We'll have those for you. All right. How many? Do we have more copies of ours? The A97. Okay, we will make sure, Mr. Chair, that we have copies of that. Well, there's one. All right. Um, all right. All right, uh, with that, uh, we will stand adjourned.